I might sound like the most spoiled baseball fan ever, but even though Yamamoto and Otani went to the Dodgers, Soto got traded to the Yankees, this has easily been one of the most boring off-seasons I've ever experienced. Now, luckily, we do have a pretty big signing to talk about today. A World Baseball Classic legend is going to Toronto, so we're going to break that down. We also have an update on MLB Network's rankings for 2024, as well as maybe the worst Hall of Fame ballot I've ever seen. So, yeah, a lot to talk about today. Now, the first thing I want to talk about, because this could be affecting a lot of you guys watching right now, Bally Sports, if you guys don't remember, they went bankrupt a few months ago. Bally Sports, they were in charge of hosting, I think, 11 MLB teams, and because they went bankrupt, those teams were not getting paid their TV money, and because of that, a lot of those teams could not afford to sign free agents, aka the Cleveland Guardians, who actually publicly said that out loud, which I don't think is very smart, but hey, go off. But Amazon just injected $100 million into Bally Sports, and they will be a minority stake owner, but the thing is, even though Bally Sports was in charge of 11 different teams, Robert Manfred stepped in and stopped Amazon from actually acquiring all 11 teams, so maybe the other six are going to have a different deal with MLB or Apple TV or something like that, but I'm worried about this because we saw what happened between the Chiefs and the Dolphins. They were bought by Peacock, and that annoyed a lot of people because we all thought that streaming services were going to be us breaking free of the chains of cable TV, but honestly, I kind of miss the days of turning on the TV and just going to a channel and there's the game. Like, what are we doing? So again, Bally Sports was in charge of 11 teams, but Amazon paid $100 million to have access to five of them. We have the Detroit Tigers, the Kansas City Royals, the Miami Marlins, the Milwaukee Brewers, and the Tampa Bay Rays. So again, five of the 11 are going to Amazon. They will have the rights to stream all 162 games, which has me worried because if I pay for the MLB TV package, am I going to get blocked by Amazon Prime? Because I do not have a Amazon Prime. I mean, I do, so I'm going to be all right. But imagine if you don't have Amazon Prime, but you have MLB TV, but then those games on MLB TV are now blocked because you have to have an Amazon Prime membership. If that happens, yo, baseball, Stop it. All right, let's stop being pessimistic for just a second. We'll complain more at the end of today's video, but let's talk about the fact that the Blue Jays picked up Yariel Rodriguez, who was a flat-out star for Team Cuba in the World Baseball Classic. He is going to the Blue Jays on, I think, a three- or four-year deal. Let me make sure I'm saying this correctly. Yariel Rodriguez is going to the Blue Jays on a four-year deal worth $32 million, only $8 million for a guy that's about to turn 27 in 2020. He had a 2.9 year in 2021 he had a 2.95 era and then in 54 innings in 2022 in japan yariel rodriguez turned in a 1.15 era with a crazy 5.3 hits per nine he didn't allow a single home run in 54 and two-thirds innings and also one big thing that he did in japan he upped the strikeouts and at the same time he lowered the walk so yariel rodriguez between 2022 and the world baseball classic last year he became a flat-out stud but the question that we have to ask now, are the Blue Jays done with Alec Manoa? Because right now, Yariel Rodriguez, he doesn't have a spot in the rotation. Or does he? If we go to fan graphs and we take a look at the projected starters going into 2024 for the Blue Jays, they have Kevin Gosman as the ace. That makes sense after what he did. Jose Barrios, he bounced back. I would still put Chris Bassett above Jose Barrios, but after that, they have Yusei Kikuchi. And I'm almost positive that the GM of the Blue Jays, I believe his name is Ross Atkins, towards the end of the season last year, he said that he is excited for Alec Mano to bounce back. He's going to be a five starter. So Yariel Rodriguez is getting $8 million to be a fancy shiny reliever in that bullpen I don't know if I really buy that so maybe Barrios is going to become expendable maybe Yusei Kikuchi is going to be a long reliever he's making some good money as well I don't know what the Blue Jays are going to do with Alec Manoa he's kind of the odd man out and I say that because he was useless last year this is another website that I love baseball savant and I love it because it shows just how good a player was at really any aspect of the game of baseball so in 2022 you want to see a lot of red Alec Manoa was one of the best pitchers in all of baseball and the biggest reason why when he allowed contact it was not hit very hard and on top of that he was also getting hitters to chase more often that is swinging at a pitch outside the zone look at what happened in 2023 a full-blown cataclysmic avalanche of regression happened to Alec Manoa he wasn't getting anyone to chase he was walking everyone and their mother he went from a 2.24 ERA in 2022 to a 
5.87 ERA in 19 starts with only 79 strikeouts and 87 innings. He was very confident of himself and honestly, maybe he needed to be humbled. I don't know. If you're a Blue Jays fan, what do you make of the 2023 Alec Manoa? Was it deserved? Do you think that he's going to bounce back? I'm genuinely curious. So again, according to the predictions, Yariel Rodriguez, who has been a stud overseas and in the World Baseball Classic, right now he's kind of a fancy long reliever, but I don't know if I buy that, especially if Alec Manoa does not turn it up and break out again, almost like Cody Bellinger did with the Cubs. Maybe Manoa wasn't healthy. I, I don't know what happened to him last year. It was one of the weirdest declines I've ever seen. So in the intro of today's video, I kind of complain that this has been a borderline boring offseason. And the biggest reason why Cody Bellinger, Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery, Matt Chapman, Josh Hader, Jorge Soler, even guys like Jock Peterson, Clayton Kershaw, I know that Clayton Kershaw is not going to be healthy yet until the All-Star break, or he might miss all of 2024, but there are so many free agents who are taking their sweet time with signing with a new team. These are players that are literal game changers. If Cody Bellinger went to a team like the Guardians and he replaced Miles Straw, the Guardians would be infinitely better. If Blake Snell goes to the Angels, I mean, that's going to help them out a lot. Jordan Montgomery, maybe he goes back to the Yankees. Maybe he goes back to the Rangers. A lot of these guys are difference makers, so I can't really do predictions for the 2024 season without knowing where Jorge Soler is going. Or Josh Hader, maybe he goes to the Phillies. And now the Phillies have a reliable back end of the bullpen instead of using Craig Kimbrell. So, of course, what did I do? I used social media to my advantage. I asked the question, should MLB implement a free agency deadline? And let me just say right now, even though the majority of people would like this to happen. The MLBPA, the Players Association, they would never allow this because this would put infinite more power in the hands of the owners. If you could literally dictate the timing of which a player needs to make a life-altering decision, yeah, I don't think that works unless something came into play like a salary floor. And a lot of people have been asking for that as well. So maybe a salary floor is more practical as opposed to a free agency deadline. What do you guys make of that? Guys, look at the MLB Network top 10 second baseman rankings. What are they doing? Now, if you're looking at this and thinking, Fuzzy, this is a Photoshop fake thing. You're not being realistic. This is definitely not MLB Network because they're a baseball TV channel. They probably know ball. No, this is correct. They did not put Ozzy Albies or Bryson Stott in their top five, but you know who did? The fans. The fans of Major League Baseball quite literally know more ball than the TV station that is in charge of broadcasting baseball and building up the next generation of baseball fans and educating them. Well, they're not educating them properly, obviously, because how can you have a top 10 second base rankings without Bryson Stott or Ozzy Albies. Look at this stat about Ozzy Albies. He's making history as a second baseman, and you don't think that he's top 10? Stop it. Also, one more thing I want to show you guys. This is the Hall of Fame ballot of Mark Purdy, and I could argue that this is the worst ballot I've ever seen because every single voter gets 10 votes. They have 10 votes to spare. He actually took away a vote from Todd Helton, who deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. So he took away a vote from Todd Helton. He voted for Todd Helton last year, woke up and said, nah, he's not a Hall of Famer anymore. He then gave that vote to Omar Vizquel. And the reason why that's so weird, do a quick Google search on Omar Vizquel. And if you still want to vote for him, you're just weird. He only used three of the 10 votes. If you voted for Todd Helton last year, why would you not vote for him this year, considering you have seven extra votes? Mark Purdy, what's what's going on up here, buddy? Honestly, we might have to hire Dumbledore as the next commissioner of baseball. We should have a Triwizard Tournament, and if you want to be a Hall of Fame voter, you have to put your name into the Triwizard Cup, and you have to be deemed worthy enough to actually be in the voting process. Like, can we make that happen, please?